Hello students and welcome to Science for Class 9 in the chapter Matter in our Surroundings. In the previous video, we have discussed the following topics. What is matter? The physical properties of matter. Characteristics of particles of matter. And states of matter and their characteristics. In today's class, we will be discussing effect of change of temperature and effect of change of pressure on the states of matter and the concept of evaporation and the factors which affect evaporation and how evaporation causes cooling. So let's see this a little more in detail. In change of temperature, we will be discussing the following points. What is melting point? What is latent heat? What is meant by boiling point and sublimation? In change of pressure, we will learn about liquefaction of gases and in evaporation, the factors and effects. Can matter change its state? States of matter can be changed by applying external forces. Solids can be changed into liquid and liquid can be changed into gas. For example, ice is solid form of water. Water is liquid state and vapor is a gaseous state of water. That means water exists in all the three states of matter. Ice, which is in the solid state water which is in the liquid state and vapor which is gas. Let's look at this illustration here. Pay attention to what is written at the side. On the left hand side I have written cool and on the right hand side I have written heat. This denotes the temperature. So when we say cool there is a decrease in temperature and when we say heat there is an increase in the temperature. So let's begin with ice which is in the solid state. If ice which is in the solid state is kept out at room temperature or subject to heat which means there is an increase in the temperature, ice is going to get converted to water which is a liquid state. Now water when subject to increased temperature will get converted to vapor which is the gaseous state. Now let's look at this. What would happen if the temperature is decreased? Vapor, when it is undergoing condensation, it will cool down and get converted to water. And when water is kept in the fridge or in the refrigerator, the temperature is reduced and hence the water will get converted to ice. Let's begin with the first factor which affects the change in the state of matter. We will begin with the effect of temperature. As I spoke in the previous slide, we know now that with increase in temperature, solids will change into liquid and the liquid changes into gas. While when there is a decrease in temperature, a gas will change into liquid and the liquid will change into the solid state. So let's see what happens when there is an increase in temperature. This is an illustration of the particles present in solids. The particles in solids as we know are very closely packed together. They are held together by strong forces of attraction and the space between the particles is minimum. On increasing the temperature of solids, the kinetic energy of these particles will increase. Due to increase in the kinetic energy, the particles start vibrating with greater speed. The heat supplied by heat overcomes the forces of attraction between the particles and the particles leave their fixed positions and start moving freely. A stage is reached when the solid will melt and get converted to the liquid state. Now we know that in the liquid state, the space between the particles 
is more as compared to the solids and the particles are held by weaker forces of attractions as compared to the solid so since there was increase in temperature and the forces of attraction between the solid particles has weakened due to increase in temperature the solid melted and got converted into the liquid state so on further increase in temperature the same phenomenon will take place and a liquid will change into gas which means when a liquid is subject to increase in temperature the particles in the liquid state will also be undergoing an increase in the kinetic energy they will break the forces of attraction that are holding the particles together and then these particles are free to move around and they get converted into gas so there is a change in the state of matter from the solid to the liquid state and from the liquid to the gaseous state so what is the melting point the temperature at which a solid turns into liquid at atmospheric pressure is called the melting point the process of melting that is the change of solid into liquid state is also known as fusion we need to keep a few things in mind the melting point of a solid is an indication of the strength of the force of attraction between its particles so what does this mean would all solids melt at the same temperature no because the melting point is going to depend upon how strongly the particles are held together in the solid so let's look at this this is an ice cube what would be the melting point of ice the melting point of ice is 273.16 kelvin now here we have another solid uh, matter which is iron would iron melt at the same temperature or would iron have the same melting point as ice the melting point of iron is 1538 degrees celsius or 1538 degrees celsius i have already uh, shown you how to convert from degree celsius to kelvin if you have missed that video kindly go and watch the video so that you can do the conversions easily do convert this degree celsius to kelvin scale and you can uh, leave it leave the answer in the comment section so if you look here the melting point of ice and the melting point of iron is different this is because of the strength of forces of attraction between the particles present in ice and the strength of forces of attraction between the particles in iron is different when a solid melts its temperature remains the same so where does the heat energy go in the melting of ice the temperature of the system does not change after the melting point is reached even if we continue to supply heat so this heat gets used in changing the state by overcoming the forces of attraction between the particles this heat energy is absorbed by ice without showing any rise in temperature and we say that this heat is hidden in the contents of the container in which the ice is being melted so since this heat is hidden we say that this heat is the latent heat latent means to lie hidden thus latent heat means the internal heat in the system the heat absorbed or released by a substance during the change in its phase without changing in its temperature is called latent heat in other words the heat required to convert a solid into liquid or a liquid into solid without change in temperature is called latent heat boiling point the temperature at which a liquid starts boiling at the atmospheric pressure is known as its boiling point boiling is a bulk phenomenon 
particles from the bulk of the liquid gain enough energy to change into vapor state. The boiling point of water is 373 Kelvin or 100 degrees Celsius. Let's discuss about this a little more in detail. The changing of water into vapor, that is changing of liquid into gaseous state. This will take place when the water has reached its boiling point. Now water gets converted into vapor when required heat is supplied to it. When heat energy is supplied to water, the particles of water start moving even faster. At a certain temperature, a point is reached when the particles have enough energy to break free from the forces of attraction of each other. At this temperature, the liquid starts changing into gas. So let's look at this illustration here. These are the particles of matter present in the liquid. Now if we subject this liquid to increase in temperature, these particles will start moving freely because they will gain more kinetic energy. So the forces of attraction which were holding these particles together is going to become weak. So these particles now start moving freely. A point will be reached when these particles start moving so freely and so vibrantly that they will start changing into the gaseous state. This is an illustration of the particles when they have broken free from the forces of attraction. The space has become the maximum and now this is got converted into the gaseous state. So this is just another illustration for you to understand that uh, when water undergoes boiling and it reaches a certain temperature, it will get converted into the gaseous state, which is steam. The latent heat of vaporization. The latent heat of vaporization is the amount of heat energy that is required to change liquid into vapor at atmospheric pressure at its boiling point. Now why does steam or water vapor have more heat energy than water at the same temperature? The particles in steam, that is water vapor, at 373 Kelvin have more energy than water at the same temperature. This is because the particles in steam have absorbed the extra energy in the form of latent heat of vaporization. Hence, this is the same reason why the burn from steam is more severe than burns from boiling water. What is sublimation? A change of state directly from solid to gas without changing into liquid state and from gas to solid without changing into liquid is called sublimation. Now, we all know that solid like ice will change into liquid and then change into a gas. But in sublimation, the change is directly from solid to gas or from gas to solid without changing into the liquid state at all. Matters can change their state from solid to liquid and from liquid to gas on application of heat. This is what we have discussed in uh, a few minutes ago. But there are some substances which change directly from solid to gas on application of heat. This phenomenon is known as sublimation. The examples are camphor or aluminum chloride. This is camphor. When heated, camphor or aluminum chloride changes from solid to gas without changing into liquid and from gas to solid without changing into liquid. So here we have an example of sublimation of ammonium chloride. You can follow this activity on your textbooks. Now let us discuss how the effect of pressure can bring about a change in the state of matter. By applying pressure and reducing temperature, gases can be liquefied. That is, gases can be changed into liquid. Now this is a container in which gas is present. Now if we use a piston to push, so we are applying pressure on the gas present in the cylinder. So when pressure is applied to the gas in the cylinder, 
and the pressure brings the particles of matter together this gas can get liquefied it gets converted into the liquid form now this is simply uh, this can be simply stated by saying that an increase in pressure brings the particles closer and this increases the force of attraction between them and this brings about the change in the state of matter carbon dioxide gas is is solidified by applying high pressure and solid carbon dioxide is known as dry ice now here is solid carbon dioxide which gets converted directly to the gaseous state without undergoing a change into the liquid state so why is solid carbon dioxide known as dry ice solid carbon dioxide gets converted directly to the gaseous state on decrease of pressure to one atmosphere without coming into the liquid state hence for this reason it is known as dry ice we know ice formed from water is going to get converted into the liquid state before it gets converted into the gaseous state and water is wet it is not dry whereas solid carbon dioxide gets converted directly from the solid state into the gaseous state thus we can say that pressure and temperature determine the state of a substance whether it will be solid liquid or a gas let's discuss the next subtopic evaporation what is evaporation the process of conversion of a liquid into vapor at any temperature below its boiling point is called evaporation evaporation is a surface phenomenon the particles of a liquid have different amount of kinetic energies the particles present at the surface possess comparatively higher kinetic energy as compared to those present in the bulk therefore particles at the surface with higher kinetic energy are able to break away from the forces of attraction of other particles and get converted into vapor examples are uncovered water which will slowly change into vapor because of evaporation and the drying up of wet clothes happens because of evaporation what are the factors which affect evaporation surface area temperature humidity and wind speed affect the phenomenon of evaporation so this means that evaporation depends on surface area temperature humidity and wind speed let us discuss the first factor surface area and how it affects evaporation increase in surface area increases the rate of evaporation for example clothes are spread up before putting them for drying this happens because with increase in surface area more particles of liquid which are at the surface will increase the rate of evaporation if clothes are put up for drying without spreading them it will take longer time for the clothes to dry up let's discuss the second factor temperature and how it affects evaporation evaporation increases with increase in temperature and a decrease in temperature will decrease the rate of evaporation i'm sure you all are aware that on a hot sunny day clothes will dry up quicker than when it is a dull day why does this happen because due to increase in temperature the particles which are on the surface will get more kinetic energy to go into the vapor state and this results in increase in the rate of evaporation humidity the rate of evaporation will increase with decrease in humidity and decreases with increase in humidity now we all know that the amount of water vapor present in air is known as humidity the air around us 
cannot hold more than a definite amount of water vapor at a given temperature. If the amount of water in air, that is humidity, is already high, this will decrease the rate of evaporation. So we know in the rainy season, clothes take a longer time to dry because there is so much of moisture present in the air. So this is decreasing the rate of evaporation. So the rate of evaporation is decreasing with increase in humidity. Whereas on a hot summer day, there is decrease in humidity, there is less moisture in the air. So evaporation will be quicker. The next factor is the wind speed. With increase in wind speed, the rate of evaporation increases and with decrease in wind speed, the rate of evaporation decreases. A common example is of clothes drying faster on a windy day. With increase in wind speed, the particles of water vapor move away with the wind, thus decreasing the amount of water vapor in the surroundings. Let us now discuss the effects of evaporation. Evaporation causes cooling. How does evaporation cause cooling? In an open vessel, the liquid keeps on undergoing evaporation. The particles of liquid absorb energy from the surrounding to regain the energy lost during evaporation. The absorption of energy from the surroundings make the surrounding cool. Let us take some daily life examples of cooling effect of evaporation. What happens when one pours some acetone or nail polish remover on his palm? Acetone and alcohol, these are volatile liquids. When kept on palm, their particles gain energy from the palm or surroundings and evaporate causing the palm to feel cool. Why do people sprinkle water on the roof or open ground on hot sunny days? On hot sunny days, people sprinkle water on the roof or open ground because the latent heat of vaporization of water helps to cool the hot surface. Why do we wear cotton clothes in summer? During summer, we perspire or sweat more than other days. Perspiration is a mechanism of body which keeps our outer surface cool on hot days. Cotton is a good absorber of water and it helps in absorbing the sweat and exposes it to the atmosphere for easy evaporation. This keeps us more cool. Thus, in summer, we are advised to wear cotton clothes. This is all for today's class. Don't forget to convert the given temperature to Kelvin and leave your answer in the comments below. Thank you.